it means that, say, with an individual, mm -hmm. it's about trying to make the most of themselves. Right. So it's a desire to um, progress, grow, expand. Right. Now, there's obviously comes uh, some positives that can also come with some negatives, with a dark side. Right. So perhaps, if we're all honest, um, ambition is also about um, helping us to establish our sense of worth mm -hmm. and our sense of self. And so we get this external validation that we made money, we got a good job, um, we have high standing in our community, whatever. So, but still, I think within that, I, I, I still think ambition is actually a positive attribute, mm -hmm. um, but it's about um, how it's channeled. Okay. That's for the individual, but there's no reason, there's every example of how groups of people then are ambitious, or, mm -hmm. or countries are. Um, so the idea that um, a particular culture, a particular group of people, or a particular country has um, a, a different flavour, a different style to ambition, mm. uh, um, and it needs to understand that and how that works. Of the the positive side of it and the negative side of that, um, in order to then you know reach for whatever they're aiming for. Okay. So, are you ambitious? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, n never in terms of um, did I want to be you know all these years that I've been a journalist. Did I ever want to be, you know, editor of The Economist or right, whatever? Right, right, right. Never in that sense. Um, for me, ambition um, has been a rather more personal about um, having the opportunity um, to, um, to work, mm -hmm. um, to keep learning, to keep exploring, and, um, and, you know, my family and my relationships. Now, in that, um, I've been incredibly lucky and privileged mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, being able to keep working as a journalist, um, and um, which is a huge privilege because you get access to right. all sorts of people and ideas, and and um, and but also a responsibility to try and be useful in that. Mm -hmm. So, ambition, I ambitious, I, I, I am ambitious, absolutely but in the sense of just wanting to keep progressing mm -hmm. in some form. N nature and nurture are obviously part of that. As I was growing up, um, my parents were ambitious for us, my brother and sister, myself, um, in a conventional sense of good education, good job. Um, and I suppose in... In, in a muted way, I mean, this was England in the 1950s, right, right. about being a sort of a good citizen, a good yeah. person, and, that. Yeah. Um, and um, that latter part was informed more um, perhaps by um, the Anglican Church right. uh, and family in that, right. uh, rather than um, front and centre um, in, in a parental sense. Right. I mean, sorry, as parents, they were always trying to guide us to be good people good people you know tell the truth you know, all that kind of stuff so when I say all that kind of stuff that's important it <laughs> is yes um, and I think it's that but also along the way uh, particularly when I was out on my own as a an, um, a, a late teenager in the States um, and trying to find a way to get to university in the States rather than go back to England um, two people were immensely important to me. Mm. One, the headmaster of the school I was at in Colorado on an exchange program. Mm -hmm. And um, I got into a good university but had no financial aid and right. Chuck called them up and I... Suddenly had some. I had a scholarship and I had right. loans and a job. And he, he... I stayed in touch with him right until he died at the mm. age of 93 a couple of years ago. Yeah. And... Um, but the sense that he had cared and um, made an effort to help. Right. Um, and then similarly, when I was trying to get 
work out how to do graduate school, mm -hmm. my employer in, in the kosher catering service I worked for in Chicago, who had been a former journalist, right. um, he asked me what I wanted to do and I said I wanted to go to the Dill School of Journalism at Northwestern and I got a place but I couldn't afford it. I didn't know what to do. Next time I saw him he gave me a cheque for the year's tuition. Right. And I said, I'll repay you. And he said, no, no you don't need to repay me. This right. just go and be a good journalist. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know people who are, um, are uh, wrestle with all sorts of things, mm -hmm. whether it be um, a, a physical or a, a mental thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so their determination, their fortitude in um, trying to work with that, you know, o overcome those things. Um, I think people like that are incredible because mm. um, society not, doesn't necessarily give them much credit right. for their huge efforts. So, in one scale, there's things like that. Mm. There's people like that. Um, then there are um, people who have huge visions and are mm. amazingly articulate about them um, and um, are ambitious to build those ideas and work with people on those ideas and um, which can be um, truly um, transformative um, mm. and um, so just in the sort of areas that I'm interested in you know whether it be people like um, Bill McKibben right. um, founder of 350.org or Kate Rayworth, one of my favorite mm -hmm. economists, or Tim Jackson, likewise. So absolutely people like that. Right. Then there are people who um, do, um, who build something very extraordinary in terms of a large organization um, that um, is useful in all sorts of ways. So there's people like that. Mm. So um, for me, ambition comes in all sorts of different ways like that, and all yeah. sorts of different flavors. So if I was, so I suppose the next question would be, is there any unifying, is there any common characteristics or, mm. or unifying um, ideas there? And one would certainly be um, that they can imagine something. Right. Um, whether it's they can imagine that uh, they might have Down syndrome, but they're still in a find a place to live and a place to work, right. and they need a lot of help with that. But th that's they can see themselves in that ambitious place, or whether it's somebody who can imagine a great product or a great service or a great company. Being with. So that that imagination would be really crucial. Then there would obviously be something um, about the spirit, um, and I, I use that word very deliberately and very carefully because anything like confidence or mm -hmm. strength of character or anything like that, those are fine. Mm. But I think there's something far deeper going on there. Right. But, um, so I think that would be a, a unifying thing, although in each of those different types of person that that spirit would have moved them in, would, there would be different expressions of that. Right. So, I think those would be perhaps two of the mm, characteristics mm. one might find across a wide range of quite different ambitions. On occasions, quite often, um, not having um, sufficient um, spiritual strength to overcome um, um, questions of worth and usefulness and the rest. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I worry that um, brain power, body and all the rest fade. I hope I've got another three decades ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and I have wonderful role models like my 96-year-old father-in-law right. um, in that. Um, um, but in a in a in a very real sense, 
I, I hope I can, in my own heart, in my own mind, bring together an awful lot more. This would be my ambition. Right. Um, to, in however small a way, um, do some more. So, so there's 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 ambition there in that sense. Yeah. I, I I don't think I've peaked. Right. I've, I've obviously peaked in various right. physical senses. Right. <laughs> um, um, but I I. I I, you have more in you. Yeah, I, I'm really hanging on to this thing that I just, I can learn more and do more. So I, I haven't peaked yet. 